hello. Uh, my name is Pujit. Uh, I come from, uh, I am an undergraduate student at Penn State University, and I worked with the faculty, uh, computer science faculty, whose name was uh, Vinayak Ilan Govin. And uh, the project uh, and the research that uh, we're presenting is um, obstacle avoidance and pathfinding systems for mobile robot navigation. Uh, so uh, the problems that we were taking a look at was uh, to figure out how to navigate an area in an un unknown environment, uh, which is a challenging task, primarily because the robot needs to do real time um, adjustments to its uh, steering angle, as well as its um, power uh, in which it can move forward. Um, and some examples of uh, where there's an unknown environment um, and navigating an area and a robot would be useful would be uh, places like a disaster struck area. Um, since they're dangerous, hard and dangerous to navigate because of live wire and fires, it poses a real danger to humans who like to search for victims. Uh, instead of having humans searching for victims, it would, much, it would be much better if robots were able to do that instead. Uh, so a goal that uh, we uh, aimed was to uh, building a program that can navigate a robot car uh, to the target uh, using obst obstacle avoidance and pathfinding algorithms. So in order to do that, we actually uh, we programmed a Raspberry Pi to interpret data values uh, for robot navigation. Uh, we also uh, used an overhead camera that could uh, take in all the information uh, of all the objects and the surrounding obstacles on the map uh, and then be able to create a path uh, for the robot to take from one place to another place um, uh, using this path. And, and all, additionally, a system was built to communicate between a workstation and the robot car uh, using socket programming. Uh, additionally, algorithms, algorithms were developed uh, for obstacle detection as well as obstacle avoidance so that, the, so that the robot can actually avoid its obstacles. Um, these were some of the hardware programming languages and services and libraries that were used in order to code um, this, uh, uh, this uh, Raspberry Pi car. Uh, so we actually used a smart car kit that we found on, uh, that we found on Amazon. It had everything we needed uh, in order to navigate um, uh, any obstacles, which was a PCB board, motors, cameras, and ultrasound sensors. Uh, our camera and the ultrasound sensor will be the inputs for all the data that the Raspberry Pi will be processing, which will then be sent to the motors to uh, navigate uh, throughout, the op throughout the map. Um, additionally, we were using a workstation. In our case, the workstation was just a laptop that would communicate between the Raspberry Pi uh, and, the, and the laptop. And the Raspberry Pi was used in order to control the, the robot car. Uh, additionally, we used Python. Uh, and within Python, we used libraries uh, called YOLO object identification. YOLO object identification is um, an object identification uh, algorithm that can be trained uh, using, uh, which is a neural network algorithm that can be trained. Um, we actually trained this neural network algorithm using uh, Google Collab, and we just rented some uh, GPU space from there. Uh, additionally, we also used OpenCV uh, and TensorFlow. Uh, TensorFlow to uh, for all our machine learning applications uh, and OpenCV in order to identify um, ob obstacles, objects, and also to uh, do other um, processes to the images in order to uh, get the information we need from it. Um, we also used COCO, which is also another object identification library that already has a library pre-built into it that can identify, identify basic objects, objects such as um, water bottles, um, blocks and targets and other such things. Uh, there were quite a lot of challenges that we faced while uh, coding and designing this um, this Raspberry Pi car. Uh, one was uh, Raspbian, which is the OS used by Raspberry Pi, uh, can sometimes be extremely unreliable. Um, it can um, not boot up properly, uh, and this causes us to lose a lot of data. Um, additionally, it was also difficult for the robot to understand its relative position uh, with the path using the pathfinding algorithm due to the fact that there was no GPS uh, for the robot that, that was attached to the robot. The robot had no way of understanding uh, where exactly it was in the map. The only thing it knew was the past actions it did, it did and the future actions that it needs to do. Uh, if there was one small problem where the um, where the robot took a turn a bit too much. It could deviate the robot uh, from the target 
and cause it to not actually reach its target. Um, another problem we had was figuring out how to allocate the Raspberry Pi's computing resources in the workstation's resource efficiently to be able to create a cohesive system where the, where the workstation can supplement anything that the Raspberry Pi uh, is performing, any task that the Raspberry Pi is performing. Um, additionally, finding a good image processing algorithm was a, another challenging task. We looked at different, different techniques uh, within OpenCV as well, uh, things that we'll actually explore later on in this presentation. Uh, additionally, imagery acquisition was an extremely big problem as well, due to the fact that the Raspberry Pi can only um, only uh, process images uh, up to a certain point. So the amount of images being taken in by the Raspberry Pi was diminished, and this reduced the efficiency and the efficacy of the, of the robot being able to respond to its environment. Uh, so with uh, first uh, method, we'll, first algorithm we'll be uh, looking at is the pathfinding algorithm. And uh, within this, uh, we compared two different methods. One is the digistor algorithm, uh, which just finds the shortest path between uh, two obstacles or two objects uh, using nodes. And another one is data-based pathfinding. Uh, uh, digistor algorithm, uh, we just uh, we put the objects as the nodes and using the objects, we would, we would then create a um, we would then create a path for which the robot can take to get to the uh, specified target. Um, with data-based pathfinding, instead, we, however, did not need to use any sort of uh, pathfinding algorithms. We just needed to find out the uh, object, and we need to find out the tar the target and the robot. And using YOLO object identification, identify the target and identify the robot figure out its positional, um, figure out its X and Y coordinates and uh, find out uh, and identify what, uh, how much the robot is deviating from the, uh, from the target and what is that data value for that. Uh, additionally, after we got data value and I'll explore, I'll explain more uh, how we use the data value, but the robot navigation would then use, uh, uh, in the beginning we used uh, lane keep assist so we had tape uh, on the floors and uh, the robot would need to uh, follow the tape to get to the target. Uh, that was the first, uh, first method of navigating that we have done. Uh, the robot for that uh, used uh, three different algorithms that I'll actually explore in the next slide. Uh, for database navigation, however, uh, since the, uh, the robot knows the data value, the robot would just need to turn that specified uh, number of uh, degrees and go towards uh, the go towards the the target. If the robot encounters an obstacle uh, as it's moving towards the target, the robot would just move out of the way of the obstacle and then keep moving forward until it gets to the robot. Uh, to navigate around the obstacle, we used uh, YOLO object identification once again, as well as the distance sensor to figure out where exactly this object is and how far away it is from the robot and to also identify this object as an obstacle or a target. So uh, these are three algorithms that we have used uh, for lean keep assist. Uh, one was edge detection, specifically the canny edge detector. Uh, I've looked at other, uh, other edge detecting algorithms as well, such as the Sobel, op uh, Sobel edge detector operator. However, uh, we have found that uh, the canny edge detector um, seems to work a bit better. Uh, than the Sobel uh, edge detection, uh, than the Sobel edge detecting algorithm. Uh, additionally, we also used an ROI isolation or region of interest isolation. The main, the primary uh, reason for why we did this. So the region of uh, ROI isolation is this image over here, and basically just crops so that we only include the lines on the road. Uh, the reason why we did that was because the Raspberry Pi does not have many, uh, does not have a lot of computing uh, resources. And uh, this way we can get a faster processing time um, because, it, because the whole line transform requires a lot of computational resources uh, to identify the lines on the road and uh, decreasing the number of lines that the, that the algorithm needs to work with would uh, increase the processing time of the algorithm. Uh, so this is the flow chart of how all our different systems have been working together. Uh, all our systems have been divided into two separate systems, which was 
One was the workstation, which did most of the pre-processing and the Raspberry Pi, which did the real-time processing. Uh, in the workstation, uh, we took a most of the pre-processing involved in creating the path for the robot to uh, take to get to the specified target. So for example, the workstation was completely in charge of taking the photo from the overhead camera, identifying all the obstacles, objects, targets, and the robot on the map using uh, the ob YOLO object identification algorithm. From there, it would determine the X and Y coordinates of the obstacles, the targets, and the, and the, and the, um, and the robot. And from there, the data, the data value would then be calculated. The data value would then be sent to a server, and the server was actually hosted within the workstation. And the workstation would basically then just send the, the data value to the client, or in this case, the Raspberry Pi using socket programming. From there, the Raspberry Pi takes over and it starts uh, doing real-time processing where it takes inputs from the camera and the distance sensor to monitor its surroundings and figure out if the robot needs to uh, move away from an obstacle, move towards the target or um, any other actions. Uh, so some of the results that we have gotten uh, while we were comparing uh, the digital algorithm and data-based pathfinding, um, we found that the digital algorithm uh, overall took uh, 0.112 seconds for the program to calculate a path. And this was uh, over multiple iterations. So each iteration, you would take 0.112 seconds. Uh, additionally, the, the, um, the data-based pathfinding algorithm, however, took uh, 1.249 times 10 to negative fifth seconds to calculate the theta value the robot will use. Um, please note also, again, as I said this before, that every iteration, it takes this many seconds. So it adds up over time, which is why um, um, we wanted to keep it as low as possible. Um, another, some other future work that we have wanted to look at later on was that the, the robot was not able to create a 3D map of its surroundings. Um, and because of that, it was not able to detect holes, depressions, and other uh, other obstacles that are not within the same plane as the robot is. Um, this creates a problem because the robot would not be able to avoid these surfaces. So the robot would just think that it's just a plain surface and keep on going as though there was uh, nothing wrong there. And this would create prob this would create um, uh, significant problems. Uh, which is something uh, we would like to work on later uh, in the in the future. Uh, additionally, uh, since the Raspberry Pi was doing majority of the image processing, this meant that the the robot, uh, the Raspberry Pi, was not capable of doing um, highly uh, highly. Um, it was capable of doing efficient algorithm uh, uh, algorithmic processing. However, it was not able to uh, uh, do it to an uh, to a high quality. This meant that. Uh, we would need to uh, later on in the future work on uh, finding a better and efficient image processing uh, method or technique uh, as well. Um, and basically in conclusion, uh, uh, one thing that can be taken away from this is that uh, uh, the picture taken overhead uh, used YOLO object identification to identify all the targets. And then they were targeted, uh, they were used as endpoints. The target was used as an endpoint for which the robot can get to. Um, comparisons were made between the digital algorithm and the data based uh, pathfinding algorithm. Uh, and we found out that data based pathfinding was a bit more effective in getting the robot to uh, one place, from one place to another place efficiently and, fa and, and quickly. Uh, additionally, ultrasound sensors and, and the camera were used to navigate the obstacle. Uh, and this was done by using the distance of the obstacle and uh, by identifying the obstacle. And all these methods uh, were run over two separate systems that were connected using a, system, a server client port. Um, these are some of the references that I've, uh, that I've uh, used for this research project. And um, uh, thank you.